It's kind of laid out here in General Santos City in the Philippines. We're at Manny Pacquiao's uh, compound. He's uh, training with four weeks to go. Uh, it'll be Manny Pacquiao defending his WBO welterweight championship title against undefeated junior welterweight champion Chris Algieri. It'll be November 22 at the Venetian Macau live on pay-per-view starting at 9 p.m. East Coast time, 6 p.m. West Coast time. Manny went eight rounds today with Mike Jones and with Victor Postal uh, in sparring. I know training's going very well. He's ahead of schedule. We'll let Freddie Roach, who's here with us, as well as Manny. Freddie, how about uh, a few words from you, how training camp's going and <laughs> your expectations uh, for the fight? Well, we have a great training camp so far. You know, uh, usually we start with, with uh, mid workouts and so forth with Manny. We usually start at four rounds. My first day in the gym with Manny this this time, we went 12 rounds. Manny wasn't even breathing. We've had a great start, maybe the best start we've ever had, and uh, sparring's been really going well. We have over 34 rounds of sparring in so far, and uh, a little more go- was go- where to go, but we got some great sparring partners with Postal, the number one contender in the world, Mike Jones, a big 47-pounder, and we have... Victor Postal. Victor Postel and uh, the third one is from Ukraine. Matrosian. Matrosian from San Francisco. So uh, we've got all guys uh, tall. Um, I think some guys better than our opponent, but uh, we'll see very soon. Manny Mabuhai, welcome to the call. Want to say hi to everybody back in the states. Hello, everyone. Thank you for this um, phone call interview. Manny, <coughs> how do you feel going up against the second tallest opponent you've ever had in your career? I'm excited to um, to fight again with uh, a tall opponent like Algeri. Um, I think this is the chicken. Uh, no, it's not chicken. Uh, been fighting now, you know. I've been fighting a tall guy like uh, like Algeria, but I know what I'm doing and I know I'm, what, I, what I'm going to do in the ring. What is your biggest concern with Chris Algeri? Um, you know, he's a pretty good mover. He, uh, he moves pretty well. He's be very defensive, uh, at least against um, Bruce Lowe when I faced him last time he was. But, um, you know, he has a good left hand and he has a good jab, and I think his jab is his best weapon. And something we really have to take take care of. Uh, Manny, uh, uh, I was wondering. Uh, we saw recently uh, that you were uh, playing uh, basketball with your team in the Philippines, and uh, you know some people might say that that uh, could take away from your focus on uh, the fight and training. You know, how do you <clears throat> see that? Is that something that uh, in any way benefits uh, your preparation? It um it will not uh, affect to my training because it's Sunday when I play in basketball and, and Sunday it's no 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 training so uh, and it's good also uh, basketball is good also to help uh, you know um, footwork and balancing it helps a lot um, and, and that's why I I, I always uh, that's why I I always in shape uh, even if. I don't have a fight because I always play basketball. Okay. And, and could I just follow up one other thing? Algeri has has made some comments uh, that uh, suggest he's very confident of his ability uh, to defeat you despite the difference in experience. Have you paid much attention to that, and what do you think of it? Um, I know what he's feeling, but uh, I'm also confident that I, I, I'm, I'm going to win the fight in Jesus' name. And, you know, he's doing his, his, uh, his best in training, and I'm doing my best in training. So uh, the result is going to be a good fight. That last game that Manny, Manny played, that's the only basketball game he's playing during training camp. To some people, it might seem as if Algeria has come from nowhere. Uh, you know, does he deserve your respect? Is he is he a worthy opponent at this stage? Well, he beat Ruslan Pernavikov, one of the toughest guys out there, one of the best punches in the world. He got off the deck twice. He showed a lot of heart. Um, he definitely deserves to be there, and it's going to be a great fight. Uh, they, we, we, that's why we're training so hard for this fight. We have such good sparring partners. 
Because we're not taking him lightly at all. The same of uh, Friday's opinion. Uh, we're not taking lightly for this fight, and he deserved for this fight uh, because of what he saw and what is he, he proved in in uh, Rosland fight. Hey Manny, um, I had a question. Do you um do you plan on continuing to coach your bas your basketball team um leading up to the fight? No. Um. Right now, uh, <clears throat> I have an assistant coach and a coaching staff to handle the basketball team and. I'm uh, very focused right now in my training, and after after the fight, will uh, I will come back to the team and uh, focus for being a uh, head coach of the team. And I mean, just talk about Manny playing in your first professional basketball game. Um, I mean, what what was that like? And 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 uh, I mean, obviously you have a big fight coming up. And just talk about if you were at all worried about getting injured. It's good. It- it's a uh, it's good experience uh, to play in a, a professional basketball game like that, and you know I I didn't play long. I just play for you know for to to make encouragement to my team. That's why we we won the the first game. So it's a history in in basketball in the Philippines that uh, the rookie and uh, the first team is uh, uh we won the first game. So it's good. I, I feel very um, excited and you know honored because um, it's first time that uh, in in PBA bas- basketball of the Philippines opening, it's uh, more than fifty two thousand audience. Bob, um, I wanted to ask you. I mean, when you found out that Manny had played in a professional basketball game recently, what was your reaction? Were you worried for his health? Well, I found out that he was playing before he played, and I wasn't a very happy camper. <laughs> you know, uh, professional basketball, uh, no matter where the country is that you play, is a rugged sport, and uh, a, a player can turn an ankle very, very easily. These players, the NBA players, are fantastic physical specimens and yet they get injured all the time. Uh, So an injury would have really wrecked havoc havoc with the fight. Uh, So I was not very pleased. Uh, But uh, everybody's uh, assured us. Manny has assured Freddie. uh, Freddie has assured me uh, that that's it. I mean, after, (coughs) after, uh, after he does the fight on November 22nd. Uh, if he wants to try out for the New York Knicks, that's okay <laughs> with me. Also. They, they, they could use a point guard right now, actually. Um, Manny, last last question, <laughs> Manny. Um, Manny, what what do you enjoy more doing? I mean, just you know, do you enjoy playing basketball more more than you do boxing? I'm enjoying um still I'm enjoying in boxing and but my cross training aside from boxing is basketball. That's why in my house there is a basketball court so that's my cross training aside from boxing so to keep in shape and <clears throat> I, I I also like ba- basketball. It's been a while since you've had the knockout and here you are fighting against a, a guy that's coming up in weight, a guy that was knocked down two times and had his face busted up by uh Provodnikov. You're a lot faster than Ruslan. I mean, it seems to me that this might be the perfect fight where you could, you know, get a knockout for the first time in a while. Can you give me your thoughts about that? And, Freddie, I'm interested in your take also after Manny uh, gives his answer. Um, we cannot, uh, you know, we cannot control the fight. It's not uh, uh, The fight is not uh, all the same. We have different opponents, so <clears throat> different, different result of the fight. But uh, what we're doing right now is uh, to... Uh, <clears throat> to get back the the hungerness and the the focus and the killer instinct that the uh, the people want to see. Well, you know we've got some big star partners, and uh, you know that's why uh, Mike Jones is really big, good puncher, and so forth. And Manny's doing really well with him, and he's him some good shots too. He, he's hurt him a couple times in, in training camp already, and. Uh, uh, he's, shown, he's shown good power so far and uh, he's shown the intensity that that I want. That, that when he hurts somebody, that he opens up on them and, and finishes them. I told him if we, we, we get rid of his farm bottle, we, we just get another one. So that's uh, training camp is going really well. We have some really good farm partners for this fight.
I would love to see a knockout. You know, the thing is, I, I, I think, you know, at 47, man, he's, you know, maybe a little bit smaller than most of the 47 pounders out there. We have to, you know, feed him five times a day to make that weight. And uh, this fight's at 44. I think this punch power will come back, and I, I see a knockout coming for sure. I'm still hungry, and then uh, I'm doing what I did uh, before. Uh, what we did in, in wild card uh, training, uh, that's what we did right now. So it's good. It's good for me. It's, uh, it's uh, it, the intensity of uh, training, uh, more heavy bag in meets and, you know, apply metrics. So good. Okay. If somebody gets up, goes up to the plate to hit a home run, he has less chance of hitting a home run than the guy who goes up to the plate just goes to meet the ball. The knockout comes, the knockout comes. But, you know, to go out for look for a knockout and to neglect other aspects of a for fight, particularly against an intelligent fighter like Algeri, would be folly. Now, if he gets if he gets a knockout, that's great. He absolutely increases the marketability. But you don't go out there looking for the knockout because if you do, you have a chance of getting it than if you fight your normal fight. Bob, what is the reasonable uh, expectation for the pay-per-view numbers for this fight, in your opinion? Well, you know, I think we did quite well going back to last November. We did 475,000 buys for Brandon Rios' fight. For a fight that took place outside the country, I thought that was a great number. Now, uh, with Al, with uh, Chris Algieri uh, getting the type of publicity that he is getting, which we never had before. For example, in I don't remember ever. I mean, I'm sure in the Ali days it was different, but I don't remember recently ever a fight getting an article in the New Yorker magazine that way this one has. Uh, in uh, this week's New Yorker. So, uh, and for example, if you ask uh, 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 people who watch Fox Business News, where Algeria has been on numerous occasions, uh, which fighter they knew better, Chris Algeri, would say Tim Bradley. They would say Chris Algeri. So while it's true that among fight fans, Algeri may not be as well known as an established guy, say, as Tim Bradley. Uh, among the general public, more of the public know now Algeri than they do most fighters. And therefore, I think we're going to uh, do uh, a number uh, akin to, to what we did uh in a Tim Bradley fight, uh, which is uh, anywhere between 750000 uh and uh, 900000 price. One for Freddie. I, I know that the way that Manny has looked against uh, Rios and Bradley, it, it seems like he's had a little bit of a revival even. Uh, what do you attribute that to? Well, you know, he's, uh, his condition, his, his training has been really good. And training here in general, in general, Santos is really good for him. He's really comfortable. We we have a really nice gym here, and his family's here, and his home's here. So I think he's more at ease with it. He doesn't have to worry about his family so much. And uh, you know, we we've we've got great sparring partners. And this camp is the best sparring partners we've ever had. And uh, they're going to get him on top of his game. What what did Postal? What's Postal done for him in, in the gym? Well, you know, Postal's got a great job. He's tall. I mean, he's taller than Algeria, and uh, he's you know he's rated number one. He's he's a little bit, um, you know, he's very smart. And I, I see Manny having a little trouble with him, and it's more of a thinking match out there. Who's pulling, who's 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 going to pull the the right move off at the right time? So it really makes Manny think, and uh, that's something Algeria will do also, and. That's what we're getting ready for. Freddie, earlier in the call, said some of his sparring partners might be better than the opponent. So I'd just like uh, Freddie to elaborate on that a little bit. 
Well, you know, Polish is a very good fighter, very difficult fighter. He's taller than Algeri. He has a better left hand than Algeri. Um, but, you know, Algeri is a solid guy also. I, I mean, I'm giving, uh, you know, both guys are very good, 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 good guys. And I think we get the best farm partner we could possibly get for the fight. You don't see that as a slight against Algeri that uh, he may not be, uh, you know, the best guy uh, Manny uh, uh, competes with? Well, you know, Postal's number one contender. He, Algeria's a, a world champion. They're both great fighters. I mean, and um, you, know, the, you know, sometimes the truth hurts. <laughs> and Freddie, in the Ruslan fight, you kept asking for him to throw the uppercut. He never really did. Do you see that as a punch that could be effective for Manny as well in this fight? Well, I think you know, Ruslan's style created that a little bit. So it depends on you know. Um, how many style, style and his really mixed together. So I, I really can't guess at that yet, but the, the uppercut was there for him in that fight, and, you know, Russo was just got caught up in looking for the, the one-punch KO instead of letting his hands go into a combination. So, but I still say it was very competitive in that fight. It was a very close fight, and, uh, you know, um, well, I, I think that Manny Pacquiao is a much um, more experienced, better fighter than Ruslan at this point. You know, you talked about the knockout power returning uh, because of the uh, the uh, the weight for this fight. Uh, why does it make so much of a difference when, you know, two, three, four pounds? Well, when you're fighting a 47-pounder and you're only weighing one, 135 yourself, and 140 yourself. Yeah, you're in there against bigger, stronger guys, and you know this. You know, Manny only has two knockouts as well as weight, but the thing is, he has a lot of knockouts at 135 and 140. And the thing is, this fight's at a catch weight of 44, and possibly if he feels good at 144, we might go to 140 again. And I think at 140, I Manny will be a better puncher than he will be at 47. Because um, the guy's just you know smaller and not as strong. You mentioned that that uh, Postal's uh, left hand is is better than Algeria's, and how that's the the weapon you have to try to neutralize. Uh, how often uh, do you see uh, a really do you do you face a really good jab where where a guy really works off it? Uh, uh, and and is effective uh, behind it. You know how how effective is Algeria's jab? It's a great jab. I mean, jab is the best punch in boxing. I mean, you got guys like Virgil Hill, Larry Holmes, won world titles with the jab. So you know it's something we really have to concentrate on. We have to really take that jab away from him. And uh, we we know we we have a good game plan on how to do do that. And uh, you know, the thing is we. Um, we're working on it every day, and that's why Postal was brought in because he has a, a very good jab, like Algeri, and the, uh, he's uh, again a little bit taller than Algeri, so it gives he, he has a little more of a reach, but it will give us a, a good idea of what to expect in the fight. Al- Algeri said that uh, that he felt that Tim Bradley in the last fight spent too much time looking for the knockout because he watched. Uh, uh, Juan Manuel Marquez's uh, right over the left, and uh, and that and that he lost focus on on anything else. Uh, uh, what have you done to uh, avoid that punch? You know, after after suffering the knockout. First, it's not my first time. Uh, <clears throat> it's not the first time that uh, it happened to me like that, like a Mar- uh, the Marquez fight. Mm-hmm. I've been, you know, I've experienced that before. And I know what I'm gonna do, and I know um, what I'm what I'm gonna do in the fight for this fight. And we 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 study hard, and we we practice hard in the gym, different techniques and different style, uh, different strategy. And I believe that we can use it in, in the fight. So nothing to worry about that. I know. I know they're gonna look that uh, fight. They're gonna watch that fight. They're gonna review that fight, and I know what I'm doing. I'm, I'm gonna do. Hey, Freddie, I got a question for you. Um, going back to the Provodnikov fight uh, with Algeri, did either you or Provodnikov? Do you think you kind of uh, 
underestimated Algeria to a certain degree. And when did you realize that, you know, that Algeria was going to be a lot tougher than anticipated uh, against Ravonikov, maybe when he peeled himself off the canvas? Did anything about Algeria surprise him in that fight? Well, you know, he was in the big punch and getting off the canvas twice, catching and knocked down. It, it was a great thing for him to do. Then you know, his eye was really damaged in that fight also. But, um, you know, um, Ruslan is a good puncher, and, but he, was, he just got caught up in looking for that one-punch knockout. And I think that was the downfall of, the, of our, our, in that fight for us. But, you know, the thing is, I think mean, Manny's a much more experienced fighter, much clever fighter, and a lot more combinations, a lot faster, and uh, not as big as a one-punch uh, one punch knockout artist, but can, can, can hurt you when he wants to. With that being said, was it better for you to actually see Algeria up close in person with Provodnikov rather than not being in Provodnikov's car? Does that, does that kind of help you a great deal preparing Manny for this fight? No, I don't think so because man, you know, Manny and Ruslan are so different. I think it's, a, it's just a, it's a whole different fight. And, uh, um, you know, seeing him uh, up close, and I've been watching tapes still uh, on his career and so forth. I've been watching when he's doing kickboxing matches and so forth. So, uh, but he, you know, he's a solid guy. Uh, he showed a lot of hard getting off his deck twice. He, um, yeah, he comes to fight. So um, that's, what, that's what we're getting ready for. If Chris Algieri were to win this fight, what would his future be? Well, let me be. Let me first put it on the legal level. If Algieri wins the fight, there's a provision in the contract that he must give Manny back a rematch. So I think that uh, if he does pull off the upset and win. I'm sure Manny would want revenge, and so that would be Algeri's next fight. And then, you know, we'd have to see what develops along the line. But Algeri is one of the most confident fighters that I've run across. Uh, he's convinced everybody that he's talked to because he believes it himself that he is prepared to give the fight of his life against Manny. He's very, very intelligent. Uh, he knows what he's doing in the ring. This is going to be a very, very competitive fight. Thank you, everyone, for uh, for this interview, for everybody, and thank you to all the, the fans. And please watch this fight. It's coming November 22nd, uh, live on pay-per-view. Thank you. God bless.